Hello. Assalamualaikum, Doctor. Waalaikumsalam. So we're all here. Good. <laughs> good. Very good. Do you see me? Uh, yeah, we can see you. Do you see the presentation? Yep. Okay. Great. <laughs> Do you want me to start? Yeah, sure. We can start. Or it's a, it's a, it's a probably five minutes earlier. Uh, no, it, it's good. We're good. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, I appreciate your presence. Uh, I uh, also want you to open the camera so I can see the crowd. Oh, you can't see us? No, just open it, please. Oh, hang on. Um, okay, I see you now. Very good. Oh, great. Okay. So hello, Dubai. Hello. Go Dubai, go, huh? Uh, the, the temperature today is good. It's uh, plus five today. So we are in uh, spring. That's, that's great. Uh, that's why I'm in a t-shirt. Um, um, so my name is Yahya Ithawi and I'm a, a physician. I am a neonatologist, but also I am a general pediatrician. Uh, in addition, I do a third job, which is uh, transport. I do pediatric transport uh, by, uh, by air and uh, by land and by, uh, by even sea. So I use hovercraft, I use uh, uh, SUVs, and I use uh, boats and uh, to transfer uh, children and babies, and I use car. So uh, my main interest is uh, uh, kind of urgent care, uh, whether it's in, in neonatology or in PICU or in uh, in uh, an emergency. Um, so today is uh, we're going to talk about a uh, very important topic, uh, uh, what we call it focused uh, lung ultrasound. Now focused lung ultrasound is uh, the meaning is that ultrasound done by non-radiologist and it is uh, followed a certain protocol in the uh, doing the procedure and in reporting. What does that mean? Means that you do certain views in certain area in certain time and you report it in a same way. And it's done by uh, non-radiologists. Uh, the reason, the main reason for that is it improves the uh, care and second, it decreases the load on the uh, uh, radiologist. So, when we say focus, we mean that it's um, in a certain area following certain uh, protocol or procedure, and it's done by non-radiologists. Now, uh, the focus ultrasound can be on the lung, can be on the bowel, can be on the heart, can be on the brain, can be for a procedure. So it's done for, for, for different things. And uh, because... Um, uh, most of our work um, as a pediatrician will be in the respiratory system and there are many uh, uh, respiratory problems and we do lots of x-rays uh, with the risk on the uh, on the on the kids whether they are children and uh, the uh, 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 the focus ultrasound of the lung gain, gain, uh, gain a, a, a great momentum at this point and it's a great tool uh, so um, uh, I'm going to start and my objectives, by end of this talk, you should have the confidence and the ability to go and try um, ultrasound by yourself using uh, 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 lung ultrasound to um, um, assess many respiratory problems, okay? Um, so uh, there is a very good body of evidence about use of ultrasound in respiratory problem. And it's a very good tool in RDS, TTN, pneumonia, pneumothorax, pleural effusion, bronchopulmonary disease or chronic lung disease, bronchiolitis, asthma, uh, asthma, and in addition, we can use it in procedures. 
So, uh, uh, as you remember, I said um, it it's, it's, uh, follows certain protocol in the reporting system, which means that when you are um, um, uh, a novice user of ultrasound, there should be somebody supervising you. So, what we do for the lung ultrasound, we go for area, and these areas we give them uh, labels. So we go for L1, which means the upper part of the lung, and then we go for L2, which is the uh, lower part of the lung, and we go for L3, which is the lateral aspect or the axilla, the area of the axilla, ultrasound, and then we go for L4, which show you the diaphragm, and we go with L5, which showed you the upper part of the uh, of the uh, uh, the bag of the upper part of the lung, and L6, which is going the uh, lower part of the posterior part of the lung, and L mean the left side, and we have the same on the right side. Now, for purpose of learning, I'm going to omit five and six, and the also uh, when you use the probe, you can uh, use the probe uh, uh, perpendicular on the ribs, or it goes it transverse, or in the same way of the ribs. So, for purpose of learning, I will use only the perpendicular, but the the principles are the same. So, make the talk easy and uh, um, uh, easy and also uh, more understandable, more simple way. Of course, when you do each window, you can do the 2D views and you can use the Doppler. You can use the Doppler to differentiate between uh, different diseases. Okay, so um, when you do lung ultrasound, you should have a movie of on L1, movie on uh, or a clip on L2, a clip on L3 and clip on L4 and that's on the left and then on the right and then you can conclude uh, what exactly the problem is. Now, um, this is on a baby where you put your prop. So you can see you have, uh, uh, you have the right and the left anterior, you have the uh, uh, area between, uh, near the liver and the spleen, you have the lateral and then you have the posterior. Now, uh, there is a little bit of what we call it uh, scanning tips, uh, which mean uh, 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 when you don't see, there is air. As you know, air is the enemy of the ultrasound. So if you don't see, remember, there is air, okay? Uh, and when there is air, there is usually artifact. So that's very important to remember. When there is air, there is an artifact. And when you don't see, there is air. So either the air in the subcutaneous tissue or there is air inside the chest, but outside the lung, which is pneumothorax, or you don't contact, there is air outside the body, uh, and because there is no gel, there is, uh, so um, remember to reposition. Um, so in lung ultrasound, there is two probes, and if you people saw, see, uh, have seen the probes uh, before, there is a small uh, transverse superficial probe, or we call it uh, hockey stick, we are Canadian, we love uh, hockey, so we call it hockey stick. And uh, when you put this probe on the uh, chest of a, a child, you'll have a transverse or, or, or um, a kind of rectangular picture. And this used for, um, it's a, a high frequency, which means the uh, the waves of the ultrasound is, is 10 and probably more. Uh, 10 hertz. I'm not going to go to detail. There's not the purpose. And there is another probe, which is the curvilinear. And you can see it's curvilinear. And you can see when you put the probe on the chest, you will see the picture as uh, some sort of like a pyramid or a coon. Or, or, uh, so it, it, it starts with narrow picture and then widen. And also this is low frequency and it's look for deeper structure. <coughs> So let's remember transverse, superficial structure, high frequency, curvilinear, deeper structure, uh, cone shape of, of, uh, of image. Are we good so far? Yes. Good. So this is a very vital picture to remember. It's very important to remember this picture. I want to put this away so you guys can see. So this is um, a, a pathological uh, representation of the alveoli. So the alveoli 
uh, are very tiny structure, as you guys know, and connected to bronchioles, and bronchioles make you the uh, um, large and round cell until you come, you have bronchi and the uh, alveola and the and the uh, uh, trachea. So you can see the distance between the alveolar wall. This distance, this is very important number to remember, is seven millimeter. So there is alveolar wall, there is alveoli, there is seven millimeter to get one. And usually when you put the probe on the chest, you see three uh, alveolar wall, two alveoli. Three alveolar wall, two alveoli. And the distance between each alveolar wall is seven millimeter. And then you see this line, what we call it the varieta uh, visceral pleural index. Okay, so remember alveolar wall, alveoli, seven millimeter. Uh, this is a, a pathological or a, a section of a pathology of, 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 of normal uh, alveoli. You can see the uh, bronchioles, you can see the, uh, the fat cell, and then you can see very nice looking alveolar wall, uh, no thickening, no inflammatory cell. Now this is uh, a diseased alveolar. You can see the wall become thick. There is um, inflammatory cells. Uh, the uh, alveoli are fold and distended, so it does not look very nice. Now how we read the um, um, lung ultrasound. Now remember, as we talked at the beginning, the um, ultrasound is the enemy of the air and the lung full of air, which means um, uh, the lung will not be seen. What we will see, we will see artifacts because of the air. And because we use uh, the artifacts to assess the lung, then more artifact, better picture, which means for the lung, the least quality ultrasound is the best ultrasound. So more good picture ultrasound is not good for lung because lung is full of air. And when there is air, you will have artifact and you need this artifact to assess the lung. So the less quality, the more artifact, the better picture for, alta, for the lung. While for the heart and for the uh, bowel, you, when you assess, you need a better picture. So more quality ultrasound, better picture ultrasound, better assessment of the, uh, of the heart. But that does not mean when you have a good ultrasound, you cannot assess the lung. But the least quality is the best way. So before we know what is normal, we need to know something called A lines and B lines. A lines and B lines. What are A lines? A lines is horizontal repetitive reverberation artifact originated from plural line. Remember, when we saw the picture, we saw line, 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 and there's two alveoli in between. The A line uh, uh, represent air and the air or these lines are horizontal. And remember, these lines are artifact. It's not pathology. So it's A mean air artifact. A line is a transverse. Okay, now we will see them. You see, do you guys see this movie? Okay, so you can see um, that there is a mark here, which represents the mark on the probe. So if you go back, uh, you will see that there is mark in here. Uh, let me put this up and see if I can show you. Oh, it's not clear. And there is mark in here. So this mark represents the uh, mark on the, uh, on the picture. Let me put this down again. Okay. So you can see this mark represent the mark on. And usually we put this mark either 
to the if we're doing transfer it will be to the uh, inside if we're doing uh, vertical it will be up so this represent the upper part of the picture this one represent lower part of the picture this represent the skin uh, the area and then the lung area near the probe and this one represent away from the probe okay now you can see that there is um, uh, an, an, an artifact in here and this artifact represent the pleura and after this you don't see anything you see mirror image of this area so from here to here you can see same to here then same here so the same here you can see it's being repeated okay so these are a lines these are a line what are they they are air where's the air in the pleura okay so anything you can see the pleura as a hyper echogenic uh, white and then repetition a mirror image of this picture why because there is air in the lung and when there is air you don't see anything okay and then you don't see um, anything after that you don't see for example the vertebral column okay now um, because there is air now imagine there is a vertebral column here what the, what does that tells you no air so you have something filling the alveoli and then your a line will be absent because no air so remember you see a pleura these are a lines okay because there is air if you don't see the a lines that means there is no air what causes no airs um, either there is a pleural fusion or there is pneumonia or there is a telectasis or there is um, um, rds or there's ttn and when there is no air, it becomes solid organ. So you see a vertebra. So they call it vertebral sign. So again, A lines. A lines are transverse lines. It's a mirror image of the pleura. It's when air line, A line is um, present, mean there's air. When their number are okay, uh, that's normal. But when their number excess, that means there is more air. When there is more air. Like which is situation you have more air inside the lung? Pneumothorax. You have pneumothorax. So if you have more A lines, you have a pneumothorax. Is A lines clear? Yes. Okay. Now we will. Uh, so when A lines are absent, then something replace the air. It's either blood, or fluid, or edema, or infection, or tumor, or mass. Now what is B lines? B lines is well defined hyper echoic vertical comet tail artifact that overcome A lines. So when you see B lines, usually you don't see A lines. What is A line A sign? Is also a repetition of what? Of the alveolar wall. It is reverberation or repetition or mirror image of the alveolar wall. Okay, and remember we say we have alveolar wall alveolar wall alveolar wall and two alveoli and the distance between alveolar wall and other is seven millimeter so the distance between a b line and the other b line is seven millimeter if that is uh, true on the picture then this is normal so you have a b line a b line and a b line okay and b line represent reverberation of the alveolar wall it's a mirror image of the alveolar wall and they represent if you guys know what is Curly's line or Curly's b lines on the x-ray and uh, mostly you see them either normal and you see them when there is a fluid okay now look at here so i, I, I can stop it when there is you can see that now these a lines there is one in here and the rest are disappeared no more a line and you can see there is lines coming so you can see this is the mark so this is the upper part of the picture this is the lower part this is near skin this is our and, and um, away from the skin you can see that this it's it's a curvilinear and we're looking for deeper structure and you can see lines coming from the uh, prop toward away from the uh, from the picture now i'm going to show it do you see the b lines yeah, we can see you guys see C, B lines and sometimes you can see A lines. There is one in here and there is one in here. So A lines represent air, A, 
air and beeline represent septi. And when they are normal, they are seven millimeter. When they become more than seven, uh, less than seven millimeter, they are abnormal. And usually you can see only three in a picture. And remember, because there is a three walls that you can see in one image of the uh, curvilinear uh, prop. When they are more three, they are not run normal. So there should be seven millimeter between one and one, and they should be three. If it's less than seven millimeter or more than three, it's abnormal. Usually the normal B lines does not reach to the end. And look to this little line, reach to the end of the picture. When it reached to the end of the picture, it's not normal. When it does not reach to the end, it's normal. When they are more than three, it's not normal. When the distance between them is more than, less than seven millimeter, it's not, not normal. So up to this point, we talked about A lines, air, and they are normal. If they are more than normal, then it's uh, more air. If they are not present, then the air is gone and replaced by B lines. And B lines represent the alveolar wall. And if they are less than three, they are normal. If they, are, does not, if they do, do not reach to the end of the picture, they are normal. But if they are more than three or the distance less than seven millimeter or reach to the end, they are not run, normal. Do you guys understand what is A lines and B lines? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, you will see more. You'll see zillions of pictures. You can see these comet tails from here to, to the end, do you see it? Do you see it? You can see it in here where it's up here. Now see, now, and you can see. You will see more A lines, uh, more, more, more B lines uh, with more pictures. But I just want you to understand the principles. But do you guys understand what is B line? What is A lines? Yeah. Okay, sounds good. So um, the uh, B lines represent the interalveolar septi. If they are normal, they are minor. They are less than, uh, they are seven millimeter separation. They do not uh, reach to the end of the image and they are three or less in number. When they are more than five and they are less than seven millimeter, let's say three millimeter, and they reach to the end of the picture, they represent alveoli. But if they are more than five, and they are less than three millimeters separated, or they are confluent, then they don't represent the alveoli, alveolar wall anymore. They represent alveoli and um, alveolar septa and alveoli filled with the fluid. Now, let me clarify this more. So if you have more than three, it's abnormal. If they reach to the end of the picture, they are abnormal. If uh, they are less than 77 millimeter, they are abnormal. The abnormal, they have two types. Either they are five or more than the five. If they are five, they represent alveolar wall edema. If they are more than five, they represent alveolar wall edema. In addition, there is something happening in the alveoli. If they are three millimeters separated, they represent pathology of the alveolar wall or the septi. If they have less than three or confluent, they represent the wall, but something also happened to the alveoli. What happened to the alveoli can be filled with fluid, can be filled with blood or other problem. Now, is that clear? Yes. Okay, sounds very good. So here's a repetition what I said, um, um, and then we will know more. Uh, and remember, A lines and B lines, they don't meet because they either have this and this. So if you have a small number of this and a small number of this and they are exchanging, then this is mostly normal. But when you have more A lines but no B lines, then make sure this is not pneumothorax and then we'll, we'll know how to do that. Now. But if A lines disappear and there is B lines, then something happened in the septi and the, uh, and the alveoli. So this is another reminder about the uh, 
uh, varietal plura in uh, plura uh, uh, the the interface between the plura or visceral plura and parietal plura this is very important later because we will know something called sliding sign uh, to remember and remember the distance between b lines or the alveolar wall the normal one is seven millimeter so we'll start with the first sign very important sign which is a pneumothorax Okay, now any one of you who wants any evidence, I will uh, give you uh, uh, a great body of evidence. At least I have 20 articles that showing that ultrasound is superior to X-ray in diagnosing of pneumothorax. Chest X-ray has a sensitivity of 75%, but specificity of 100%. So you can miss um, a pneumothorax on, uh, on X-ray. But when X-ray say if it's a pneumothorax, it's hundred percent true. Ultrasound has sensitivity of pneumothorax ninety-eight percent, so it's rarely miss uh, uh, pneumothorax. However, it's not hundred percent; it's only ninety-nine percent true when it tells you. Uh, okay. Now the other view of the ultrasound uh, is very quick. You don't need to wait. You don't need technician. Second, you can map the ultra, the pneumothorax. So you can say, this is the border from the above, this is the, and this is, and you can say exactly the size of the, of the pneumothorax on the ultrasound. The other thing is dynamic. So it's, remember, if you don't have x-ray, you use transilluminator or you use your skills by you know, checking the airways or a clinical, um, it's the ultrasound is as quick as using pneumo, uh, uh, transillumination to diagnose pneumothorax. Okay, so how you diagnose uh, uh, pneumothorax? First, start in the second intercostal space. Start in the midclavicular line. Avoid the heart. Use a, ventri a, ver a vertical orientation. And when you do your assessment or recording, do five, uh, four to five respiratory cycle. Find your pleural sign. Look at the sliding sign and look at the mirror image and uh, or we call it track sign, we will know. And there's another sky, sign called sky, ocean, beach of the, um, of the uh, uh, A lines, but on M mode, okay? So what does that mean? It looks like complicated. Now it's very simple, we will see. So uh, put your probe on the midclavicular um, area on the left or on the right. Or if you are on the left, avoid the heart, try to move a little bit to not see the heart. Uh, be on a vertical, put your probe up, I mean the mark up, uh, assess or do a clip for four to five respiratory cycle, uh, save them, and then uh, look at them again, uh, freeze it, and then you can move the, you move the probe to, uh, to, to make the slow movement and look at it. Uh, what do you look for? You look for pleura and then you look for A-lines, and then you see the sliding sign. We will talk about it. Then look at a repetition. Is there is a, a mirror image? So when there is a mirror image of something, what does that mean? Uh, what does that mean? What, what does that tell you? Air. There is air. So if you have a rib, you will have a mirror image of the rib. If you have a liver, you have a mirror image of the liver. So that's called mirror image. So you feel, look to the mirror image. It can be, if you're looking at the diaphragm, you are using uh, the four view or L4 or right four, and you're looking at the liver and you're looking on the right side, um, like um, R4, then you'll see two livers from here and from here, mirror image. If you are on the left, you see a mirror image of the spleen or of, of the kidney. So if you see mirror image, you have air. If you are working on the chest and there is uh, ribs, you'll see a ribs. And on the other side of Laura, you see another group. It's like a track. So you see multiple uh, black circles would represent the ribs, and you see the inner image of this. So it looks like a track. Okay? When you see more A lines, and you see, um, um, and then when there is air, the plural, uh, the visceral plural and parietal plural is not moving on each other because they, usually they move on each other. We call it sliding, we'll see it. But when there is no movement, what does that mean? They are separated. So if they're separated by what? Either by air or fluid. So if there is no sliding, 
there's two things. There is either air or there is a uh, fluid. Air, remember what you will see on if there is air? Mirror, mirror you'll, say a, a, you'll see A lines. If there is a fluid, you'll see B lines. Is that clear? Yes. Now, if, you, if there is a fluid in the pleura, okay, you will see better image below because you now you don't have artifact, you don't have mirror image. While if there is air, uh, you'll see A lines and you'll see mirror image. Uh, but you also, either way, you'll not see light sliding. So if there is no sliding, okay, I mean there is either fluid or there is air. And how to differentiate, we will talk about it. Now, the importance of sliding sign is vital. Why? Because when you put a tube inside a baby or a child and you put your probe and you see the sliding, that means you are in, you are intubating the baby. So you don't need to do x-ray to confirm you are in. So absence of sliding is one of the sign in addition to the excursion of diaphragm and goose sign of the neck. We'll talk about it later. But when you see sliding, that means the lung is functioning. That means the, the, as first, the lung is functioning, so it's breathing in and out. Second, the parietal pleura is sliding over the visceral pleura. If there is no, it's either if your baby is not breathing you are, and there you are intubating, mean that you are ventilating the esophagus, that's one. But if you are, the baby is breathing spontaneously or the child and you are, um, or you are intubating, either way, um, there should be a sliding. If there is no sliding, there is two things, either air, and when there's air, you'll see A lines. And when there is A lines, you will not see the vertebrae. And when there is A lines, you'll see a mirror image. Um, if there is uh, no sliding, and you don't see the mirror image, you don't see the A lines, you see B lines, then there is a fluid in the, in the, in the pleura. And we'll talk about it. Now, when you see A lines, what you will do, you put M mode. What does M mode mean? It's, it's um, letter M on the screen. You put your probe and you press that, and then you'll see same area, um, uh, 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 pictures again and again, repetition or frame per second of the same area moving in this. And then you will see sign called sky, ocean, beach, which means you see uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the skin, the pleura, and the lung. So you see the sky, and then you see the ocean, and you see the beach. The beach is the sand, and the sand represents the lung. So if it's, there is no pneumothorax, you will not see, you'll see the beach, you'll see the ocean, you'll see the sky. But if there is no, uh, there is air, you will not see the beach, you will not see the sand. In addition, you'll see repetition of the ocean, which is the pleura. And then it looks like barcode, if you guys know what's barcode. So if you see a barcode, then this is a pneumothorax. We'll see that all. It's very simple, very easy. And you can take it right away, do ultrasound right away and diagnose without being a radiologist, without experience. Okay, now you look at this picture, what we call it sliding sign. You can see this is a rib, this is a skin, uh, this is a muscle, this is a pleura, and then you see a repetition of the pleura. Okay, so how, what is sliding sign? You see that there is a B lines in here and B lines is moving. So there is B line going there and there. When you see B, B line moving like this, then this is a positive sliding sign. If you see this, then there is no air inside uh, pleura and there is no fluid. More clear, um, same present picture. Um, um, now I, um, I, I will try to explain more. You can see there is a pleura and you can see there is A lines. Okay. And then you can see that there is nothing uh, after, uh, when you see A lines and you see air, you don't see anything after that. You don't see uh, structure, you don't see vertebrae, you don't see anything. They call it a caustic window. Look at now this, this movie. And you tell me. Don't look to the, the goal movement. Look at the B lines. Do you see them moving or you don't? Look at this one. Now look to the pneumothorax. Look at the, is, is there is movement? Is there is a B lines? You see no, no, no sliding. 
we, we will see more about it. We'll repeat this picture, you guys to see it. You don't see the B lines moving. Okay, now there is something called lung point. It's a differentiation. Uh, well, can, we the, can we see the normal one again? We, we will, we will, but just go with me. I will repeat that. But you see that there is a B line moving here? Okay, we'll repeat that again. See this line, do you think guys, I'm gonna freeze it. Look at here and you see a line in here moving in this way. Okay, I'm gonna move it, look at it. Look at this line, this one. Do you see it? See it is moving? Do you see it how it's moving? This line, this one. Look at the pneumothorax. No B line is moving, no B lines. The whole picture is moving, that's okay because baby is, is having muscle and, and you are moving also, you are trimming, but you don't see the B lines moving. Look at the pleura, very thick. And there is no B lines moving in here. And look at the lung point, more clear. Look at this B line, this one. Do you guys see it? Yes. Now, do you see this B line? Yes. Do you see this one also? You see it, it's sliding. See it, moving. Okay? So there's B lines in here and stop in here. Does not move, does not finish. They call it lung point. This is where the pneumothorax end. We'll go more. Again, we'll repeat this again. Look at this line, remember this line. Don't look at the whole picture. Look at the pleura and look at this line moving. This one. We'll see more clear. Now look at the pneumothorax. Look, first there's zillions of A lines. There is no B lines, okay? And there is no sliding. So as if, as if dead picture, you see the B lines that were moving, it's not available. You will learn more, of course, you will see more. Now look at the lung point where the, uh, what we call it lung point. Lung point it can be pneumothorax, can be fluid. You can see these, look at this line, how it's moving and then stopped, cannot not complete. Because this is where is pneumothorax. You can see now very clear, but we're reaching your gun. Okay, a questions? Questions, okay. Now I know you're surprised. I know you're a little bit confused. I, I know that, but you will time, you will be more confident. Okay, so when there is no sliding sign, there is pneumothorax. And if you put the M mode or the M the motion, you will see barcode sign. While there is, whenever there is no pneumothorax, you will not see barcode sign. You see sign called ocean, sky, ocean, beach sign. Or, or the other way, you will see a three areas of different area in one picture when you do M mode. When you do M mode and you see barcode, it's a pneumothorax, okay? So when you don't see sliding sign, either there is pneumothorax or there is chest tube or there is a fusion. And then you have to differentiate between, uh, when there is infusion, there is no barcode sign, okay? What is barcode sign? So now we will talk about the barcode sign, the sky, ocean, beach sign. What does that mean? You will see in M mode, you will see three uh, different areas. The first area is the sky, which represent things above the pleura. And then you will see the ocean, which is the pleura. And then you see the sand, which is the lung. When there is no lung because of the air, you won't see the sand. You'll see a repetition of the pleura, or we call it barcode sign. So how you do that? You put your probe and then you press on M mode and then you should be between two ribs. You should not be on the ribs and you should be perpendicular on the ribs and you have to take one picture. And then you will see um, either sky, ocean, beach sign, which is the normal, or you don't see the sky, ocean, beach sign. You said, you see, an ad, in a, in, instead you see a repetition of the plura or we call it barcode sign, or some people call it uh, seashore sign. Now we'll see it. Look at this. You have the sky here, you have the ocean, the pleura, and then you see pneumothorax. 
you see Lang Point, and then you see the beach, the sandy looking Lang picture on a mod. This is barcode sign, this is pneumothorax, this is the end of the pneumothorax, this is the lung. Is this picture clear? Yes. <laughs> this is barcode sign, this is seashore sign, this is sky ocean beach. Normal, abnormal, but we are on M mode. We are not on two mode picture. So if you suspect more A lines, you see more A lines, okay, very multiple A's, and you don't see sliding, you see more A lines, you don't see B lines, you don't see sliding, then there is air or there is something uh, replacing the uh, sliding or preventing the varietal, uh, parietal pleura on the visceral pleura. What is this? Either air or, or fluid. If it's air, you'll see many A lines. If it's not air, you'll see more B lines and no sliding, there is a fluid. You put uh, M mode. If you see uh, sky, ocean, beach sign, this is normal. You have no pneumothorax. If you don't see the beach, you see only the sky and ocean and repetition of ocean, or we call it barcode sign, then you have a pneumothorax. Okay. Look at this picture. Look at this picture. This is a barcode sign. This is um, uh, sky, uh, ocean, beach sign. And because the baby is breathing, so the pneumothorax is moving up and down. So you, you are at the edge of the pneumothorax. And I'm gonna move it again. It's in here. Now you see that there is a, a rib here, and then you see many A lines, okay? And you don't see sliding. And then you see there is um, sand here, but it's no sand here. Let's move it. Barcode sign in here, you see it? Do you see it? You see the, the, the plura, repetition of the plura, and the barcode sign. You don't see barcode sign here. There is a rib in here. You can see the rib is in here. Very clear. Do you see a do you see a barcode sign here? Yes. Do you see a repetition of a line here? Yes. Do you see a b lines? No. No. You don't see sliding. Look at here. There is no sliding. Don't look at this. This is a rib because the guy who's doing the um, echo is moving. Okay. You see this one. See this barcode sign? S sky, ocean, beach sign. In here, barcode sign. Here's the pneumothorax end. This is the lung point. This is 2D picture. This is a mode picture. Now, of course, I'm assuming you are familiar with the machine. So if you are not familiar, it depends on your machine. And if you connect me and you bring your machine, put the picture or the camera on it, I can show you how to use it. But, so I don't know which. Look at this. Sand, barcode sign, pneumothorax. Now, is that clear? Yes. Let's wrap up again. A lines, air, represent plura. Oops. C barcode sign, C plura, repetition, mirror image. You don't see a lie, you don't see anything after the lung. You don't see the vertebrae, absence of vertebral sign. You see multiple um, A lines. You don't see B lines. You don't see sliding. You see an M mode barcode, it's a pneumothorax. So let's wrap up before we go further. There is A lines, represent air, artifact, pleura. It's a mirror image of the pleura, okay? And if they are uh, small in number, but there is sliding, there is um, sometimes replaced by one or two B lines, it's normal. When they are excessive, they are abnormal, more air. There can be in the alveoli, it can be in the pleura. If there is no sliding, then you have um, A lines, more air lines in the pleura. You put M mode, you see barcode signs, the pneumothorax. If you put your M mode and you don't see a barcode sign, then there is A lines or the alveoli is filled with something. If you see more B lines, then there is no air. You see sliding, you see B lines is moving, there is no air, there is something replacing them. If they are free, they are normal. If they don't reach to the end, 
they are, uh, they are abnormal. If they are more than three, they are abnormal. If there is distance less than seven uh, uh, millimeter, they are abnormal. If they are confluent to each other, they are abnormal. They are beeline. There is something, either consolidation or fluid or infection or mass replacing the alveoli. Again, you see uh, no pneumothorax. You see ocean, beach, uh, ocean, uh, sky, ocean, beach sign. You see the sand, normal, no pneumothorax. See the difference between, no mo here's the, the uh, uh, no motion, no motion. This is chest wall. You see there is sand. You see there is no sand here. See there is pneumothorax here. There is normal lung here. So this is pneumothorax. This is barcode sign. Now, remember we talked about uh, 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 track sign, okay? You see ribs? Do you see them? Yes. You see a repetition of them? Yeah. Does they look like a track? I don't know. <laughs> does it look, does it look like a track, uh, 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 the tires of track or no? Yes, that's a track sign. This is a mirror image of the ribs. And why there is a mirror image? Because there is air in the alveolar, in the, in the pleura. So this is a track sign. So presence of track sign, absence of uh, sliding, more A lines, and barcode sign and a track sign is a pneumothorax. You can see the pneumothorax end here. Here there is none, or maybe there is, I don't know, but looks like there is no, but I have to move it to understand. And we can see that's, that's, that's my name, that's, the, that's my picture. That is from our hospital. This is a track sign. This is a baby with a pneumothorax that we uh, did the chest tube without x-ray. Go ahead. There's one question, which probe are you using for this sign? Like to listen to sign? Okay, that's a good sign. Look at the picture. Is it uh, a Kooning? or um, a rectangular? A rectangular. Good, so that's a superficial probe. That's a, the, the hockey stick. That is the uh, transverse uh, probe. That is the uh, straight probe. That is not the curvilinear. The curvilinear is a cooning and it's for deep structure. The, 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 the curvilinear is of low frequency and it's for, uh, uh, for deep structure. This is, this is the mark. This is the upper part. We are in R2. And you can see it's a, a rectangular or a square or whatever you call it, but you can see the probe, the edge of the picture. It's not a cooning, it does not curve. It does not start small and extend. So this is a superficial picture. So you always use the superficial picture for uh, uh, looking at the vertebrae. And you use the, uh, the curvilinear for deeper. The uh, superficial is high frequency. The curvilinear is the lower frequency. The curvilinear is for deeper structure. The, and how you differentiate is the shape of the picture. Does that make, uh, answer your question? Yes. The positioning. The position, remember we won't talk. We have uh, one, two, three, and four. That's all we will do at this point. Don't do more than that. So upper, lower, axillae, and the diaphragm. One, two, three and four. Upper chest, lower chest, axilla and diaphragm. One, two, three, four. It will be R on the right and L on the left. So this is, you, this is R2, right? So where is that? It's on the right in the lower chest. R, R, R1 on the right upper chest. R3 on the right in the axilla, lateral part of the lung. R4 is on the right and looking at the diaphragm. When you look at the diaphragm, you use the deeper structure probe, the curvilinear, the, uh, uh, the low frequency probe. Another track sign. Another track sign. Okay. Now, is pneumothorax clear or not? Remember, we talked about A lines and B lines, and we talked only about pneumothorax. We said A lines represent air. They are reverberation of the alveoli, of the pleura, or what does that mean? A mirror image. And why we have mirror? Because we have air. Okay? So more A lines, more air. Less A, li less A lines, less air. 
And then when there is air, you will not see B lines. If you see B lines, you will not see A lines. And when you see B lines um, and they are not sliding, you have two things. Either there is uh, something replacing uh, the uh, flu uh, pleura, either fluid or air. Um, uh, so if you don't see sliding, the pleura is not functioning. If no sliding with A lines, it's air, it's a pneumothorax. If there's no sliding with B lines, there's more fluid in the alveola, there is pleural fusion. So we talked about pneumothorax and we talked there is more A lines and when you do M mode, you will see barcode sign or you see track sign or when there is more air, you will not see the, the vertebrae, absence of vertebral sign. So these are the signs of pneumothorax. Do you have a, any question about pneumothorax? You can use both. You can use both. You can use both. But the 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 more superficial, it's better to use uh, the uh, the uh, the high frequency probe, the uh, memory stick, or the uh, straight probe. So for all the lung, use straight. Do not think of the curvilinear until you look at the. Uh, either you have a problem like abscess or pneumonia and you want to do to look at the deep structure, we'll talk about it later, or you're looking to the movement of the diaphragm. If you want, so it's the number four. So if you're doing R4 or R3, use the, uh, the less frequency, the curvilinear. All the other part of the lung use the straight prop. And how you know, it's uh, either square or rectangular. So this is the sign, the mark, it's, you should be pointing to the upper part and we are on L2, uh, which means the lower left. So L1, L2, upper and lower. L3, the lateral part of the lung on the axilla. L4, L4 is the diaphragm and L4 is always L4 and L4 is always curvilinear. Does that answer your question? Uh, I mean, you said how, how is the probe held? Is it perpendicular or horizontal? Well, we talked about, we, ag we agreed, you can do both, but at this point, you do only the perpendicular. You are on 90 degree angle with the ribs. Always do that. Don't do the other picture because it will confuse you at this point. So we'll repeat then because you guys seem to forget. We'll go back to the beginning. I'm going to go back to the beginning. when we started. Here. So you have R1, R2, upper and lower. You are always perpendicular. What does that mean? Uh, you put your probe at a 90 degree to the ribs. Then you do R3, which is the larger part, and R4. So forget about the transverse view forget about five and six or the bag of the lung. Always perpendicular, always the mark is up. Always for the, all the lung, use the memory, uh, the uh, hockey stick or use the uh, straight curve or the, uh, uh, the square picture curve or the rectangular picture curve for the, uh, uh, for the L4 or R4, use the curvilinear. Okay. Does that answer your question? Uh, I didn't. I I don't hear very clear, so I didn't understand the question. We're just asking why are the ribs appearing black? Yeah. Is it the shadow or is it the rib itself? Like oh, when you have air, you don't have picture. Remember, when you have air, you don't have picture. When you don't have picture in ultrasound, you are white. It's the reverse of the uh, x-ray. So when you have no air, you are, uh, you, are, you, are, you are black. When you have, you have air, you will be white. So anything who has no air will be black on the ultrasound. Anything with air, you'll be white or increase in ecogenicity, what they call it. 
So the ribs appear black. And because there is air after the rib, you will see the shadow of the rib again. So either you see a shadow, but if you have excessive air, you don't see the shadow. You will see the shadow. You will see a mirror image of the rib. So either you see a shadow, which means you will not see anything behind because all the ultrasound waves are absorbed and that area will be black because it's absorbed everything. And any other thing, there will be a shadow of it. Then think behind it, you won't see anything because it's absorbed everything. So the solid organs like the, uh, so when you put ultrasound on the head, you won't see anything because all the ultrasound will be absorbed. You'll see a white thing, nothing, nothing after it. You will see just something black behind it, okay? Now, when you see the ribs, you see a black area. If it's normal, you will see a shadow of it. If it's abnormal, there is more air, you'll see, you'll see a repetition, a mirror image of it. So on the ultrasound, again, it's the reverse or it's the other way of the x-ray. When you have a solid tissue, it will absorb everything. That's why you will appear black. When you are non-solid, you will be gray. When you completely air, you will be white. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. So we talked about pneumothorax. Sorry, I'm moving my uh, the pictures here and there just to give you a better uh, better view. Um, now we will talk about something called air bronchogram. Okay. okay. Air bronchogram is A lines, but they are very small. They are not transverse, they can be oblique, they can be vertical, and they are multiple, and they are not organized. These are air bronchogram. Do you guys see it? Yes. So they are air in the bronchular wall. Okay, so they are air in the bronchi. There are excessive air in the bronchi. Do you guys remember when there is any disease that cause more air in the, bron uh, in the bronchi? Any disease that you have more air in the lung, in the, in the airways, air is trapped in the airway? Asthma, status. Asthma, asthma, what else? Bronchiolitis, correct? Pneumonia sometimes causing. So when you see an air bronchogram, you have one of these. Is that clear? Yes. This is called air bronchogram. So remember, we talked about A lines, B lines, and then we talked about pneumothorax, and now we're talking about air bronchogram, because later we will mix them all. Okay. Now we will talk about RDS. Okay? Are you following? Now, the, on the ultrasound, the um, RDS picture is of five types. Now, you can see we start with type two. Where's type one is the normal. So you'll see some A lines and some B lines, and you see them sliding. You see the B lines uh, do not reach to the end of the picture. You see them, there are three in the picture, and you see them uh, separated and uh, sometimes interface with A lines. That's normal. Now we will talk about type two. So what do you see here? You see the vertebrae? Or, uh, uh, sorry, yeah. do you see the, uh, the uh, not the vertebrae, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to confuse you. Uh, we see the, uh, the, uh, the pleura, <laughs> right? Do you see the pleura? And you see, what is these small areas? Do you guys see that? This, this is a B lines, uh, the A lines, but they are not regular. They are not transverse. They are not all the end. So they are bronchograms. They are area within the white circle, echogenic, bright lines or bright spot within the region, and they represent air bronchogram. Okay? And what is the present interstitial syndrome? Um, so you can see here, there's air bronchogram. You can see a B lines. You can see some of the B lines reaching the picture. You can see they are one, two, three, 
and 4, so they are more than 3. You can see that they are separated. Okay, now this is, this is, um, this is the area or the shadow of the ribs that I'm talking about. Okay, and then you can see air bronchogram. You can see no A lines yet, but you see maybe there is an A line here, and you see more B lines. You see air bronchogram in a baby who is a premature and needing CPAP or ventilation or uh, her mom is C-section or whatever. So this is an RDS because what is you need at this age? It's either RDS or TTN or pneumonia. You don't have anything else. Pneumonia can be aspiration of um, amniotic fluid or aspiration of meconium or there is infection. So these are the differential diagnoses of this gestation. So either it's RDS or it's a TTN or it's a pneumonia. And pneumonia is of three types. Either it's an infection or it's aspiration of amniotic fluid or aspiration of meconium. So when you see this air bronchogram, you see B lines, but their number is not more than, it's more than three, but it's not that very good. So we are talking about the alveoli. We're not talking about, we're talking about alveolar wall. We're not talking about alveoli. Um, so there is a little bit edema of the wall and there is maybe or may not some atelectasis that you see more B lines. You see air bronchogram and this is the same area, the same picture on the um, X-ray. Um, it's hard to say what is there. The only thing that I can see, the cardiac ciliary is not clear. So I cannot differentiate between lung and the heart very clearly. So if there is some pathology over there. There's increase in haziness. Um, the number of ribs are okay. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to nine. We don't have hyperinflation. We don't have consolidation, they are symmetrical. So uh, sometimes, some people, we don't have uh, air flow or the fluid in the fissures. So um, maybe you can say that either it's normal or it's, there is a fluid a little bit or there is mild RDS. That way you see on the X-ray. But it, this is definite RDS type two on the ultrasound. Air bronchogram, no A lines, more B lines, they are separated, RDS type two. Now we'll go to type B. You see the difference. This is the X-ray. Now you now in this side, you cannot differentiate really between the heart and the lung because no air. The alveoli are collapsing. Okay, and here you cannot differentiate. It's more severe on the left. So. This is type three RDS. But here, look at this. It's more white, okay, less air, uh, more white, uh, more air bronchogram. You see area of confluent air bronchogram. You can see here, there is consolidation because the B line starting from here. The B line should start from the vertebrae, uh, from the, not vertebrae, I'm, I'm confused between vertebrae and pleura. Um, so there is a pleura in here. You can see the B line starting from the pleura in here. While you can see the B line starting from here. Why is that? Because there is subpleural consolidation. It's a big size. There is a little bit of consolidation here, but looks like air bronchogram. You can see B lines reaching to the end you can see they are stick to each other. So they look like a one. Here they are not stick. Here there is someone, but you can see here, they look like they are one piece. And then you can see the shadow of the rib, shadow of the rib, shadow of the rib, and you can see a consolidation here. This is type two RDS. Okay, why is this happening? Because there is interstitial syndrome, which means edema, of the alveolar wall. At the same time, the alveoli start to be filled. Or if not filled, it's thick. The air start to go from the alveoli. Is that clear? Yes, Doctor. Okay. Just to clarify, this is RDS type three, right? 
this is RTS. So we have type one, which is normal. Type two is the mild one. Type three, this one. And then you have type four, which is the severe one. Okay, the severe, look at the lung on the x-ray. You almost see nothing or what we call it white out. Okay, now you can see the B lines sometimes started from here, sometimes started from here, started from here. You have more consolidation. Okay, see this area. Do you see it? Yes. This is a pleural fusion. Okay, so you have a pleural fusion. You have air bronchogram, you have consolidation, you have B lines, but B lines is not very clear because you have a pleural fluid. So B line become less, okay? Become more black, so, but you have a pleural fusion. This is RDS type four. <coughs> air bronchogram, consolidation, pleural fusion, B lines. This is more severe RDS, okay? This is more severe ideas, but this is a white one. You can see that there is no more B lines. All the B lines are confluent. There is no consolidation. There is no pleural fusion. You see the ribs and their shadows, ribs and their shadow, ribs and their shadow. You see, do you guys see this area? Yes. This is here, there is no RDS. This is a lung point for the RDS. This is severe RDS. This is not RDS. When you see the sign, usually, Usually it's a TTN. Usually when you see a lung point, it's a pathognomonic of TTN, okay? But in this case, it's an RDS, okay? So when you see a B lines, which mean a white area and then a normal lung, this is TTN. This is diagnostic. When you see this and this, you see it. But sometimes in a baby who is late premature, more than 30 weeks, the picture become mixed. It can be this way and that way. And therefore, when you give surfactant for babies more than 30 weeks, the response is not as good as when you give surfactant to uh, babies who is less than 30 weeks. And there is a reason for that. They become mix of TTN and RDS. And therefore, always remember, when you give uh, surfactant to babies more than 30 weeks, uh, don't expect the response to drop the FI2 requirement right away and to have less need for ventilation right away. Uh, but when you give a surplus, or we call it a bless, I think you're using Sorvanta, when you give surfactant uh, to a baby less than 30 weeks, you see a response uh, uh, very quick and you can right away from ventilation to a CPAP because it's pure RTS. While when it's more than 30 weeks, it's not pure, it's a gray area. So this is an RDS, but it's mixed with TTN, okay? But this is a very good lung point. Because remember, we have a lung point in pneumothorax and lung point in TTN. Is that so clear? There was just a bit of an interruption in the connection. Can you just repeat that again? Or which, which part do you want me to repeat? Uh, just the grade five again. Uh, and the surfactant. Okay. Okay. When the baby is 30 weeks and less, the RDS is more clear. The differentiation between RDS and TTN is more clear. And therefore, when you give a surfactant to a baby who is less than 30 weeks, you will see a quick response from 100% of fire to, to room air, from ventilation to CPAP. While when you give a surfactant to a baby more than 30 weeks, the response is not as good. So you may be at 40%, you go to 30%. Because usually when you are more than 30 weeks, it's not pure RDS. It's RDS combined with some TTN, some fluid. So when you see this RDS, I can tell you that this is an RDS in baby more than 30 weeks because I can see lung point, which is TTN. Okay, so a lung point where you see a white lung and then you start to see A lines, this is a lung point. This is a pathognomonic ultrasound picture in M mode, not M mode, in, in two modes or in 2D, 2D in motion mode, pathognomonic um, 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 of TTN. While it's, it's exactly the barcode sign is a pathognomonic for pneumothorax in M mode. 
So this is a grayscale or 2D picture where there is a lung point. There is a white lung and there is some A lines or more air. And this baby has RDS, but I can guarantee to you that this uh, baby uh, have RDS with some TTN. So if this baby you give a bless, the response will not be as good as when there is no lung point because the baby is less than 30 weeks. So when you do that and you give bless, do not think that you spoil the surfactant to the esophagus, no. Your, your surfactant went to the lung, but your response will not be as good as when you have no lung point because you don't have TTN. Is that clear? Yes. Okay, sounds very good. Look at the TTN. What is the difference? It's white. Yes. It's, it's, this is TTN. Nothing gives you other than T this in, in babies, in newborn babies. This is TTN. So you can see increased ecogenicity and the ecogenicity is so big overshadow the ribs. And there is a white line. There is no A lines and B lines are all mixed up. So that means the fluid is filling the alveoli and the alveolar wall. So if this baby is, let's say one year old, then this is pulmonary edema. If this may be a newborn, then this is a TTN. This is not pneumonia. There is no air bronchogram. There is no consolidation. There is no pleural <coughs> fluid. There is alveolar edema, there is interstitial edema, and there is alveoli either filled with fluid or collapses. This is TTN. Edema, Edema, increase ecogenicity, air bronchogram, then A lines. Do you see the A lines? Yes. Lung point, pathognomonic, TTN. Double lung point, pathognomonic, TTN. Right away, don't think about it. Put the probe, you see B lines, reach to the end, they are confluent, and then all of a sudden you see A lines. The fluid end here. This is TTN. TTN is never a uniform. Okay, RDS, most of it, sometimes not, sometimes is. And you don't see much of air bronchogram. So this is not meconium, meconium aspiration. This is TTN, double lung point. Fluid, no fluid. B lines, I lines. Increase ecogenicity, some air bronchogram. Is that clear? Okay, lung point, fluid, no fluid, fluid, no fluid, TTN. Lung point, lung point, fluid, no fluid. There is a little bit of pleural fusion. Okay, more fluid, pulmonary edema, probably C-section, TTN. Pleural fusion very, very uh, increased and sh there is shadowing of the pleural fusion behind this. Interstitial edema, okay? This sign is of TTN. And remember, ultrasound is a tool. It does not tell you exactly what happened. It just tells you whether B lines or A lines. And you're not looking to the lung. You are looking to an artifact, remember that. Lung, you cannot see it because you're looking at the artifact. That's why with the beginning we said that the worst quality ultrasound, the better assessment of the lung. So remember this is, does not represent the lung. It's an artifact, okay? TTN, is this clear? Double lung point. Okay, very good. Okay, this is interstitial emphysema, okay? interstitial edema versus air interstitial emphysema. Look at this. Look at this air bronchogram. Do you see it? Do you see it? There is a bit unclear. Unclear. Look at this. What do you see here? 
You see A lines, right? You see a B lines, but does not reach to the end. So it's a mix of A lines and B lines. You can see the plura, and then you can see the shadowing or repetition of the plura, and then disappear, gradually disappear, right? Normal lung, right? There is interstitial edema or TTN. You see a fluid and then A lines. And there is A lines and there is fluid. You can see edema here. You can see some A lines. This is interstitial edema. This is a TTN. Is that clear? Okay. Look at this. Look at this. What do you see here? Air bronchogram, but they are localized, right? Yes. This is consolidation. This is pneumonia. So pneumonia is localization of air bronchogram. If they are circle and well um, circumscribed, they are abscess. But they are not abscess here. They are pneumonia. And we can see a pneumonia of two millimeter size in ultrasound. You will never see it on the x-ray. And you can see the pneumonia 12 to 24 hours prior the x-ray finding. And you can see as small as two millimeter. It's very simple. Air bronchogram. What's air bronchogram? It's A lines. They are very small. They are not transverse. They are of different directions. When they are confluent on the same area, it is pneumonia or it's a consolidation. Is that clear? Yes. Now, to make it more clear, you remember that pneumonia increases vascularity, not only fluid. It's hepatization of the lung. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And because of that, if you put Doppler on it, because there's more vessels, what you will see? increase in the Doppler, which mean more blood. So if you are questioning whether this is an abscess or pneumonia, you put Doppler on it. If you see more vessels, more blood, then this is pneumonia. If there is no blood, then this is mostly an abscess. Okay, if, if it's, it can be abscess, it'd be very well circumscribed. If it's not well circumscribed, it's a collapse. So I'm going to repeat this. This is very important to differentiate. A local area of air bronchogram. This is pneumonia. Now, if you measure this, this is about three millimeter, not more than that. So it's a subplural pneumonia. Okay, and this is even not present in textbook because we didn't know that about that because we start to know this in the last two, three years. So you can see there are no boundary of this. Is that right? Do you see a boundary? No. You see air bronchogram, very small, on a different direction. They don't cross the whole picture. Do you see this A lines? Do you see this A lines? Are you following? Do you see this? What is the difference between this line and this line? They're not organized. Correct. They are not organized. They are small and they are for different directions. But there is no boundaries. So when there is a confluent, a localized air bronchogram, these are consolidation. It can be collapse. It can be pneumonia. How you differentiate? You put Doppler on it. If there is increased vascularity, it's pneumonia. If no vascularity, it's a collapse. If there is a boundary, it's an abscess. Is that clear? Yes. Okay, now we'll go again. In plura, repetition of the plura, air lines, they fade away. There is some B lines, they don't reach to the end, normal line. There is some fluid, there is B lines that confluent. There is B line that confluent. I don't see the separation. And there is some A lines here. Lung, double lung point, TTN, interstitial edema. 
There is air bronchogram. They are localized, but there is no boundary. This is consolidation. Can be collapse, can be pneumonia. Put Doppler on it. For me, it's a clear pneumonia. I don't do that, but if you don't know, put Doppler on it. If you see increased vascularity, then this is pneumonia. If no increase, then this is collapse. If you see boundary of it, it's a, an abscess. Now you can see here, B lines, right? Yes. No A lines, right? No. But there is, a diff, there is an area separating them. They are not confluent, is that right? Yes. So this is air interstitial edema. So you have air and edema. So that's the difference between interstitial edema and air interstitial edema. Is that clear? Okay, we're gonna repeat and take your question. Don't want to worry. And you need to practice. When you start practicing, you will learn. Okay. Sorry, the question is? Uh, they want to know the difference between air interstitial edema and interstitial edema. Okay, it's easy. You see air and edema. You see only edema. You see B lines that is confluent. They become one piece. You don't see them one piece. You see air between them. What is the difference? If you tell me any condition that has air and fluid, do you remember any condition that have air and fluid? Anybody remember? It's a newborn. It's been on ventilator a long time. RDS. No, no, RDS is just three, four days. It's been on a ventilator for a long time. BPD? BPD is the pathology, but what we call it? Chronic lung disease. This is a chronic lung disease. Got it? Okay. How we know? We... If those shadows are not from the ribs and that's air, how can you tell? Where is the ribs? Like, the ribs is not as small as this. The ribs are big. This is a rib. This okay. is a rib. Ribs are very big. You don't see, oh, see only one or two ribs in a picture. You don't see like all this in a picture because you don't have, you have only 12 ribs. And when you put a probe on the chest, you either see one ribs or three maximum. You don't see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No way. And you can see that there is consolidation here. And there is a, a consolidation increase and there is a plural fluid also. So um, you, this is air interstitial edema. Now, how you diagnose uh, chronic lung disease or the pathology as uh, uh, bronchopulmonary uh, dysplasia? I don't know whether you know. What, how many types of chronic lung disease you have? Five is the grading, but what are the types? You have five grade of, uh, depend on the level of support. But what are, there are two types. There are the old and the new. The old where you see lung changes because we didn't know how to treat well before. And the new where you don't see lung changes. You see only vascular, you see pulmonary hypertension. You see only hypertrophy of the vascular system. So, Remember, when you see everything in a picture, it's a chronic lung disease. You see air bronchogram, you see, you know, you see edema, you see fluid, you see everything. Okay, this is chronic lung disease. So normal interstitial edema, double sign, TTN, pneumonia, all edema, and there is air and fluid air interstitial lymphedema, this is a chronic lung disease. So let me, uh, let me uh, rub up a little bit. We have A lines, we have a B lines. A lines is air, they are transverse. They are repetition of the pleura. When there are more air lines, it's a pneumothorax. When there is no pneumothorax, there is no sliding. When there is no sliding and there is more A lines, you bit a mode. You see a barcode sign, pneumothorax. 
and you can see what we call it sky ocean beach sign the sky represent above the plura the ocean represent the plura and the beach or the sand uh, the sand represent the lung when there is no lung there will be a repetition of plura so you will have a sky and then ocean no beach barcode sign there is no sliding when there is no sliding and there is no a lines it's a fluid in the plura so a line b lines are the reverberation or repetition of the alveolar septi. If they don't reach to the end of the picture, if they are less, free and less, if the distance between them is seven millimeter, they are normal. If they reach to the end, they are more than three, they are abnormal. If they are three to five, they represent the alveolar septi. If they are more than five, then they represent the septi and the alveoli. So we talked about A lines, B lines, and then we talked about air bronchogram. Air bronchogram are A lines, but they are not transverse. They are of different direction. They are not long. They are very short. If they are everywhere, and of course depend on the age, Okay. Have work. We have time. Good. You want me to continue? I can stop. You guys not interested? No, no. You can continue, doctor. <laughs> well, that's good to know. Now, remember, we talked about interstitial edema and air interstitial edema. So now we will talk about pleural effusion. So we use the superficial prop, the straight prop, marker toward the head. Uh, you will see non-echoic black area. That means there is no air. It's a pleural fusion. Very easy. You will see absence of mirror image. That means you will not see truck sign. You will not see the uh, repetition of the pleura, the A lines, if you are on the chest. And if you are on the uh, diaphragm, that on area number four on the right and left, you see double liver or double spleen. Or you see two livers on the, each side of the air. If you see them, this, there is air, there is more air. If you don't see them, you see a liver and the lung, spleen, and the lung, this is a pleural effusion or maybe consolidation, but pleural effusion is more black. Now, if you are on the chest and you see pleural fluid, you might see the vertebrae. We will call it vertebral sign because there is no artifact. There is no repetition. There is no reverberation of the pleura. When you see pleura or pleural fusion or pleural uh, fluid, it's either exudate or transudate or hemothorax. And then you'll talk about that. Can we differentiate? Yes, we can. But I'm not going to tell you today because I don't want to confuse you. Look at this area. What, what's, what do you see here? You see the vertebrae now. There is pleural fluid, plaque area everywhere. You see some lung tissue and the rest are fluid. You see that this is a curvilinear, a cooning shape of the picture. And you can see this is the word, the head. This is the mark. And you can see it's a low frequency curvilinear probe. You'll see there is a plaque area and you can see the vertebral sign, which you will never see in lung. 
you will see pleural fluid, you see some lung tissue, you see more pleural fluid. Now I'm gonna give you more sign. You see this pleural is septated, right? There is septia around it. Do you see it? Yes. Well, this is exudate. Okay, it's very, you see the vertebrae also. You see some B lines here, which mean there is nothing in this area. Okay, you can see another B line in here. No B lines, pleural fluid, pleural fluid, some lung tissue. Is that clear? This is pleural fusion. You see here, there is fluid, there is fluid, there is diaphragm. You don't see liver, you see liver here, there is no liver here. You see mass in here, you see fluid in here, you see fluid in here. There is nothing in here. There is a repetition of A line and there is one B line. There is fluid, there is fluid, there is mass. This is a congenital problem with fluid on either side. These are very small, by the way. You will never see them on the x-ray. Now pneumonia. What is pneumonia? It's consolidation. What is consolidation? Something filling the alveoli and we are losing the aeration. So therefore no A lines and the ultrasound picture will be transmitted to the deeper structure. The lung tissue appear uh, 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 hypoechoic. You'll see a wedge-shaped air bronchogram, and they are poorly defined. There is air bronchogram, which is hyperechoic horizontal lines within consolidation parenchyma, and enlarge with respiration. So these air bronchogram, you'll see them change in their size. There is hepatization in severe size. What is hepatization? There is no vascularity. So the lung will appear exactly like the liver. If you guys put a probe on the liver, you will never forget. If you put the probe on the chest, you will see like the liver. So that's the severest type of pneumonia. Pneumonia can be a massive lung edema, can be lower pneumonia, it also can be contusion and will be, can be microatelectasis. This is pneumonia, air bronchogram, fluid because it's black, B lines around it, increased echogenicity. There is wedge shape changes. There is no clear boundary. This is pneumonia. Is it clear? Fluid black, some B lines a little bit of A lines, air bronchogram, loculated, increased echogenicity at the border. It's not circumscribed, so it's not abscess. Is it clear? Okay. Another pneumonia in here. You can see air bronchogram, some fluid in here. There is pleural fusion, pleural fusion, pleural fusion, and pneumonia here very small size. This is a curvilinear. You can see the vertebrae, the bag of the, of the picture. Now again, normal, pleura, curvilinear, probe in here, eye line, repetition of the pleura, normal line, abnormal line, pneumonia. Air bronchogram. It's a hypoechoic, which means white, consolidation with a numerous small hyperechoic, which is black, structure and blurred margin. This is pneumonia. Increased vascularity, mild degree of pneumonia, or moderate, not mild, moderate probably, but it's not severe because there is vascularity, there is Doppler and it's very well differentiate pneumonia from collapse. So this is not collapse because of increased vascularity and does not look like liver. So this is moderate type of pneumonia. It's a lobular pneumonia and we can decade, detect all, if you map all the chest, you'll find all the pneumonia and you can tell exactly which area of pneumonia and you can see the changes within hours with your treatment. Look at this, 
What is the difference between pneumonia and this? Very well circumcised. No air broken inside. Okay, clear fluid because there is no debris and the debris usual and there is no air inside it. So this is an abscess, a very small abscess. These are because sometimes you have abscesses. Okay, especially in tuberculosis. Micro abscess, do you see this? Yeah. It's one millimeter in size. Imagine you can see an abscess of one millimeter. Do you see it? Yeah. Mm, there is a little bit of B lines. There is a here, uh, a pleural fusion. Pleural fusion, pleural fusion. See the collapse. It's the reverse of an abscess. No air, air bronchogram. Air bronchogram, pneumonia, collapse, collapse, pleural fusion, pleural fusion, pneumonia, air bronchogram, wedge shape, increase ecogenicity, collapse, collapse. If you put your Doppler, you'll see the difference. Fluid, fluid, normal lung. Normal lung or maybe a little bit of fluid because there is A lines and there is no clear B lines. Very clear fluid, collapse. I don't know, maybe there is, <coughs> sorry. Maybe there is a little bit of, of, of pneumonia here. So there is a little bit, uh, there is a small area of pneumonia here, collapse and collapse. So fluid collapse and pneumonia. Mostly aspiration. Baby is aspirated. Maybe kerosene, maybe I don't know how old the baby is, but it depends on the history. What is this? You tell me. There is A line, that's correct. Are frequent are they frequent? No, not not too frequent. Normal lung. Normal lung. You you tell me. You told me. What is this? There's B lines, correct, but they're not meeting, correct? There's one, two, three, there's an area, there is some A lines. It's reaching the end. Yeah, they're reaching the end. They're reaching the end, they're pathological, but there are only two or maybe three, I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay, so what is this? RDS, RDS. there is a little bit of a mild RDS. What is this? Infusion. There is a, a fusion, but there is a little bit of increased ecogenicity in here. So mostly, if you see an area in here, this is a TTN if there is double lung point. But it can be mild RDS, sometimes they can be mixed. What about this? Pneumonia. There is air bronchogram. Well, remember the history. Okay, there's very small, it can be pneumonia or subpleural consolidation. So if, if this is a baby on long-term ventilation, this can be a chronic lung disease. But if this baby with fever and present acutely, two years old, this is pneumonia. Okay, but it's definitely not bronchiolitis. Okay? Now, what is the limitation of the ultrasound? It's very hard to differentiate between pneumonia and atelectasis and pulmonary hemorrhage because all we are losing the A lines. So you have to use your skill to differentiate and sometimes you cannot. Okay? Because here, here you have a pulmonary hemorrhage. Here you have a pneumonia or um, maybe collapse, not 100% sure. Okay, you here you see pneumonia, but my, there might be atelectasis in here. Sometimes it's not easy to differentiate, not all the time. It has a limitation. This is a very good study of grading the bronchiolitis, and it's match the grading clinical. So it's not only diagnosing the bronchiolitis, it's graded for you. And then you can decide which one you admit, which one you don't admit, you, if you meet your clinical finding. Okay, and I'm not going to go to the details of it because I do not want to confuse you. But it's basically, it's about how many B lines and how many A lines you have. 
and where you see them and how you quantify them, whether they are anterior or posterior. Now remember when the baby sleep on the back, the fluid goes to the back. So you normally you will see B lines more on the posterior if the baby is sleeping on the long end. If you don't, if you won't see this is normal, you just put the baby for five minutes on one of its sides, on one of its side, and then take the picture. You'll see it will change because the fluid now go, if you are right side up, you will go to the left. So remember when you do the back, and I don't advise you right now to do the back because it's a little bit will confuse you. So bronchiolitis is the presence of B lines and air bronchogram. But air bronchogram are diffused, not localized, and lots of B lines. And the B lines depend on their number. With the history, you can grade V. Um, also, there is increased echogenicity of the pleura and there is subpleural air bronchogram. And sometimes you can see even consolidation. But the consolidation in, in the bronchiolitis is less than one millimeter. Very, very small, very small. Okay, you tell me about this. Can somebody tell me the finding? Don't tell me the diagnosis, just tell me the finding. So let's start with this. There is A lines. Okay, there is B lines, but it does not reach to the end, but they are one, two, three, four, five. Okay, there is increased echogenicity. There is some air bronchogram, mild uh, bronchiolitis. Okay, what about this? Well, this is not mild. I would say maybe more than mild, but you can see it's only, uh, this is a completion of the picture. You can see this is number six, number seven, number eight, and number nine. But you can see this area is more severe than this area because you have more A lines, okay, and they have less B lines. And there's still increased echogenicity, and sometimes you can see air bronchogram. It's, it's not pneumonia. And if you, how you differentiate bronchiolitis from asthma? Clinically. I, I didn't hear, I didn't hear. Age, air trapping, wheezing. All same. Uh, age, I agree with you. But what is the main characteristic of, of asthma? No, well, yeah, but the bronchi can appear anything. There is one thing is pathognomonic to asthma. Same bronchiolitis and asthma. There's only one difference between asthma and bronchiolitis in addition to the age. There is something you give, change the picture. What is called that? Steroids? Response to steroids or nebulizer? What you called it? What you call this response? Reversibility. Reversibility. That's the main difference. So asthma on the ultrasound, exactly like bronchiolitis. But when you give bronchodilator, you put the picture, you will see normal lung. It all, it's all gone. That's how you differentiate. It's very easy. If you do it, you can. It's better than spirogometry. You, you won't imagine how easy to differentiate in a baby who is difficult to differentiate between asthma and bronchiolitis. It's exactly like a bronchiolitis, but the difference is reversibility. Another bronchiolitis. There is subpleural consolidation. There's some fluid and air bronchogram. There's B lines. There is lung point here. There is fluid, less fluid. There is A line. There's lung point in here, so it's fluid. There is B lines. There's subpleural effusion. This is moderate type of bronchiolitis. Asthma exactly like bronchiolitis, but the difference is reversibility. Although asthma has more complications. So you can see pneumonia, but also you can see pneumothorax. You can see atelectasis and you can see chronic lung disease. So you will see, if you see everything, air bronchogram, A-line, 
beeline, abscesses, wedge shape, fluid. This is everything. So if the baby ventilated for a long time, this is a chronic lung disease. If the baby is on treatment, then you have chronic lung changes. You don't have just spasm now. You start to have the fibrosis and complication. So chronic asthma, it's like chronic lung disease, but the difference is the clinical scenario. Now I developed a picture for you if you guys want to practice. So you have, sorry, I forget, uh, Joby, uh, right? Joby? Your, your voice is a bit low. So what I'm trying to say, uh, your name is Johi, right? Yes. Okay. So I developed to you a reporting system. So you can do the ultrasound. You can fill this. You can follow the guideline. And then you can score. You give okay. me the score of the area. You know how many you can give me. So if it's normal, you give zero. If it's a few B lines, you give one. If it's like more than five or they are confluent, you give three. And then you give me the score. And then according to the history, and then you send me the pictures on the WhatsApp. You can be only you or anybody can join me. Okay. Um, and then I give you this picture and report it to me. Um, for uh, the first time, I would advise you to go with your clinical and standard practice and do this, this way as a side way or an extra tool. Send it to me, we discuss it, and with time you build your own experience. But you have to know how to use the machine. I can't explain to you the machine unless I see what machine you have. So there is a way that you put your camera on it and we talk like the one, yeah? Or if you know how to use it, then that's great. And then you start to share with me. So these okay. are... Uh, uh, so what we can do is we can uh, get access to an ultrasound machine because as we have all four uh, year residents here, the seniors have been exposed to the machine and the juniors have not been exposed. So I can take a recording of the ultrasound machine that we have in our department and we can Great. Not have access to that. And, and I'll, yeah, and I also want to tell you that I do training for many countries. I do for China, for India, and for Iraq. And I have uh, 250 uh, pediatricians from Iraq and about 500 from India, and about, um, I think, 600 from China and from South Africa. And I do training a lot. I travel there and also I do online. So if you guys interested to join any one of these, you are welcome. If you want to do your own group in UAE, um, and then our talks is always on ultrasound, on NICU, PICU, and emergency. So I'm a life saving physician. I don't understand in hematology. I have no idea about nephrology or allergy or pulmonology. Here my work is urgent care the three fields, the general pediatric, uh, NICU, PICU, and pediatric emergency. But the main thing that I concentrate is using ultrasound, head ultrasound, echo or heart ultrasound, lung ultrasound, bowel ultrasound, Doppler, and procedures using lumbar puncture using ultrasound, intubation using ultrasound, lines using ultrasound, so if you guys are interesting, and I want to spread this. And remember, it, we're talking about point of care ultrasound, about focus ultrasound, or ultrasound done by non-radiologists. So it follows a certain protocol, as you see. We have areas to scan. You don't do any ultrasound you like. And you should have reported to somebody who can supervise you. Okay, and correlate it. And it's an ultrasound da done by Frontier or frontline physician. So if you guys are interested, I hope that you can spread the news and even you make rumors, that would be great. Um, um, and, and join more people. I can repeat, but also I have very good software. So, uh, regarding for, the history, go ahead. Uh, regarding the history lab, do you want us to pick our own cases? And yes, then yes. from one day to 17 years old. 
Um, I, I don't go above 17 because I'm not an adult physician. I go up to 17, 18, I'm not allowed to touch. But any baby, any, any, any child, any baby, any uh, young or older uh, adolescent, from one day to 17, you are free to do that until 17. After 17 years, I cannot. But anything of that, you give me short history, so five years old, non-case of asthma, and present with this. And then you do one, two, three, and four. Don't do the back. You only do the vertical. Don't do the transverse. Okay? okay? Use the superficial for one, two, and three. And for four, use the deep structure, curvilinear. You can use it with asthma before and after bronchodilators, whether inhaler or nebulizer or steroid or whatever you're using, using for bronchiolitis, for pneumonia, for TTM, for RDS, for pneumothorax, for pleural fusion. Very beautiful picture of diagnosing kerosene. Then you can decide to send the baby home. If you have, I don't know whether you guys have kerosene poisoning or not, but uh, you can they use it very easy. It's very common in India. Usually, doctor, we don't. Uh, they, we haven't been exposed to doing lung ultrasounds here in our department. So, well, give me your department to do presentation. I can convince anybody. I'm very good in selling my ideas. So, just put them on the computer, and I will allow them. I will. Uh, I will try to make them allowing you to use the ultrasound. We will try, I'll pass on these, uh, uh, this form to everybody. So if they get an access to do the ultrasound on any of the patients, then we can send them back to you and get the feedback. Okay. So um, um, I only know, um, I think I know two people from your hospital, Sermed. You know Sermed, right? And also... How I got uh, your contact, doctor. <laughs> yeah. So um, I hope that you spread the news and you are welcome. And I'm ready to answer any question. And I uh, also wish you to be very, very, very honest with me if you like the presentation or you don't. And if you like the presentation, but you don't like the presenter, or um, uh, uh, you have any comment, please do so. Anything, I'm very open, okay? Very, very open to any suggestion because I need to improve. But also I want people to use and uh, the ultrasound and decrease the use of x-ray. It's much better, but you need the training and, 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 and time. It's dynamic, it's easy, it's l l safe, and it's cheaper. You don't need technician, you don't need films, and it's quick. That's true. Okay, now I wanna see you, I don't see you, I don't know I see you or not. Oh, you can't see us? Okay, what about here? But what interests me, you, you, you are more like ladies than men, right? Or I'm wrong? There is only one uh, of the less here with us. <laughs> but, 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 but you know, that's great because I am a feminine. Yeah, because and I, I didn't realize that in Dubai is all girls. I thought that it's man dominant. Women are ruling the hospital currently. That's true. <laughs> and men. Yeah. Okay. So, do you guys have any question? Any questions? Any questions? Okay, uh, we just have a question. How many ultrasound machines? Yeah, in the hospital, I think it's one in that they have in the ICU in the world. So there's a question regarding how many ultrasound machines are there at the hospital? Uh, usually, like in the ICU, is there ultrasound machines everywhere in the ICU, in the emergency? Like the accessibility to the ultrasound machines over there? Well, I, I, I thought that Dubai is a very rich uh, city, so it makes sense. No, uh, it we make, have ultrasound machines, but... Uh, it, make, it makes sense to have an ultrasound um, in every unit, but it, it's, uh, ultrasound is portable, so you just need more, uh, um, um, you know, more physical fitness to push it. That's all. But you can use the same machine everywhere if you don't have. But because we in, have cardiac, a cardiac echo machine and we have an emergency. Uh, you don't need expensive machines. Uh, machines, there's all, only $1,500. It's a computer and prop. You don't need more than that. And then you need a stand. So the machines that I, uh, 
usually advised in India and in South Africa, it's fifteen hundred dollars. And if you don't know, I, you can buy it online. You can go to Alibaba if you don't know Alibaba, uh, and buy it online. It's fifteen hundred. It's cheap machines. You don't need like expensive ones. But if you have money, and I expect Dubai has money, uh, you can buy more expensive ones, big ones, and more more luxury features like three D. So yeah. you, what, what we do, we do a mapping of the chest and put it on the ultrasound and tell you all the lung. It show you 3D of the lung. They have and one in the ICU, I believe. In the ICU, yeah. they have one 3D machine, but the, uh, the rest of them are all 2D. Yeah, no, the 3D and OD is, 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 is one. The difference is the software. So if the, uh, like the RAM and the room, I don't know if you know that. So there is room. So if it's a good room, or read only memory, they will have a software to grab all the pictures and it tells you uh, the direction or there, and then it, it reconstructed and give you 3D picture. So oh, it's okay. not only one, it's build the software. It's exactly like 3D CT scan. So okay. when you have a do CT scan yes, and I then you- another, I have another question. <laughs> Regarding this form that you sent us, how will, we be, how will you be able to confirm if what we're seeing is correct. Like for example, if we report a case and we'll tell you, okay, this is what we see, then how will you be able to confirm that this is what we actually saw? Do you want us to take a recording of the ultrasound or? Of course, of okay. course. So you, 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 you take your recording, you send me your recording on the WhatsApp okay. or on the Zoom or on any other media we can develop if you want. Um, you can hide the names if you want. You can share with me the names and then we can destroy the data after that. And okay. then you report your own. So, and okay. then you have a history. You show me the picture of the history and your finding and your suggestion. And then you share me the picture and then we discuss. Okay. We can discuss offline. So you send me the picture and I respond whenever I want. Or we can meet online on the Zoom. You can, every one of you can have a count on Zoom, it's a free, and then it join me like in Facebook or in LinkedIn or it's, it's and then we send we communicate through Zoom, and okay. we can have online meeting anytime we want. I have a, a paid account, so I can have up to 500 participants at the same time. Great. So uh, we can have more than people. Now we are using only one participant because all of you are using one account. But all of you can join at the same time from home, from anywhere. So different people can use the same ID and password and join on their phones. Correct. Like correct. Same. Correct. Okay. That's absolutely correct. Great. Great. Okay. All right, doctor. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I think you really like it. <laughs> wish, wish you all the best. Thank you for your time. Yeah, Thanks I've, for your time, and it's really I, late in Canada, and... I know, if, I know, but I enjoy it. I am off tomorrow. If next time, we will also ask you, uh, ask you to join uh, in future courses, if it's okay. <laughs> Great, and I'm trying to contact people to do live face-to-face -face course for one week. Uh -huh. I uh, contacted uh, somebody called Khalid uh, Al-Atawi or, or something like that. I contact a person called uh, Rahmani. I contacted the person in Bahrain also. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is somebody um, can, uh, we can do a uh, one week uh, ultrasound of the bowel. A beautiful if you use the bowel, you can diagnose allergy, cow's milk allergy. You can use it for, uh, for gastroenteritis. You can see, use it for ischemia and for necrotizing enterocolitis. You can see okay. use it for ileus and pleural fusion. You can use it for the heart and you can use it for procedures. So it's not yeah. only for the lung. To learn more echoes of, especially the heart, cardiac and bowel. It's not that's echo, it. it's not echo. We call it, we call that's it, it. Uh, yeah, that's an echo. yeah we are, we, it's not a structural echo. It's not echo for cardiologists. It's, we do echo for a, a purpose within right. a strict protocol. We don't do free echo. So we right. have a problem and we need to see if the heart is contributing or not. Right. So we don't do free echo. It's a point of care. So you right. have a problem, you have a, a edema and you know, need to know, is this heart, is the heart pumping or not? That's all you do. You don't look for the oh, structure. Okay. So okay. it's a very strict way. I have very nice software. Right. Uh, I can buy institutional, institutional account and they can send you the, the, app, the app for you. And we can do online seven lectures of echo. Definitely. So, and after okay. that, you will be like, uh, 
I know you have an exam and you want to uh, pass the exam. We have uh, yes, that's right. So um, I know your time is limited, but I was hoping to see more people like from the uh, consultant because I need people like scholar to argue with me and, you know. Right. Uh, because when pe more people to argue with me and embarrass me, that will be better, um, uh, especially people with authority, then I yeah. can convince more people. But I'm, I'm very happy and I, I like being uh, with you and I, I, I saw you and I hope we can uh, see you again. But if it's not for whether you don't like the talk or you don't like the presenter, I'm okay. No, doctor, definitely. We really enjoyed the lecture. Thank you so much. Thank you very much and uh, have a lovely day. I'm going to sleep. Thank you. Good night. Bye-bye.